Dude, I'm gonna cry, dude. They're doing the. They're actually going in, bro. Players enjoy leak. I'm actually gonna cry. <clears throat> Thirty seconds, boys. Stream starting soon. Soon in three seconds. Grave Digger League. The Necro something or Requiem. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Welcome to our live stream and thanks so much for joining us today. Our team had a lot of fun putting together Path of Exiles 315 expansion and we've got a lot to share with you. Today's live stream is a busy one. We'll start by revealing the details of the 19 new gems. Challenge League. Then we'll show you how this expansion is going to dramatically shake up Path of Exiles metagame in a big way. Thirdly, We'll talk about our plans to make Path of Exile more challenging. It was real all along, Chad. You thought I was talking about something else. It was real all along. But it gets better. It gets we'll better. Be Wait for it. It gets better. Version of real today. Once our question and answer session with it's launching today, today, boys. Let's go. <laughs> Many centuries ago, our people traveled to this accursed continent. We return to reclaim our lost relics. Okay, lost relics. The Rayclass grips its secrets tightly. We must wrench them from its grasp. But what about the necrosis? You know violence. We know trade. They're all Retrieve traitors? Our relics and we'll strike a oh, deal. Oh, 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 oh. It's heist ritual. We will follow the path of our forebears. I was wrong about everything. Fate. Oh! What the fuck? Storm rain. They wait, shrouded in darkness, for one who may finally Bosses. challenge them. Yes. Wealth okay, I was right about and this. Power will be yours should you survive our expedition. Yeah, I was right about some things. I was wrong about the theme, but I was right about a, well the windows. I was wrong about too. Looks good though. Looks really nice. Looks boggers. 19 gems too. Expedition. All right. I've oh no! Let's start with the Expedition League itself. Long ago, Kalguran explorers came to Rayclast in the hope of colonizing it. Rayclast did what it does best and they never returned. Necrodition, yeah. In the Expedition League, you will meet a group of Kalgurans who have set out on an expedition to investigate the fate of their ancestors and recover special ruined artifacts they left behind. The ancient Kalgurans underestimated the dangers of Rayclast, and this new expedition is no exception. They need your help to protect them from the undead that rise at their expedition. Okay, undead? As you travel through Rayclast, you'll encounter the Kalgurans at sites they believe their ancestors attempted to set Okay, I was kind of right. Come on. By the time you get there, I was kind of right. marked the site with signs indicating where chests are buried, holes indicating where their ancestors chest? lie, and will have possibly unearthed some remnants of past Kalguran settlement. Due to the unique nature of Rayclast, the Kalgurans have found that the most effective way to excavate these sites is with explosives. Nice. And that's where you come in. You'll place a chain of explosives across the expedition site, carefully planning what each blast is going to unearth. Oh no. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know. Plunger, any undead freed by the explosions rise from the ground and the slaughter begins. I mean... I like stuff like this, but some of these fallen Kalga are more difficult and rewarding than others Ooh. and have been indicated with special markers. Once you have defeated the army of undead, you're free to open all of the chests you unearthed and claim your rewards. It's up to you to decide where to place the chain of explosives to maximize your gains. Do you unearth a lot of monsters? Do you unearth more special monsters? Or do you go for the chests and try to avoid combat? That's okay, okay. The ancient Kalguran explorers okay. built structures on Rayclast, and you may encounter remnants of oh. these at excavation sites. 
These remnants Mamma have various mia. modifiers on them that, when destroyed, apply to monsters and chests unearthed from that explosion onwards. Okay, a little better. Drops, but have some very difficult modifiers like immune to physical damage. You'll need to be very careful with your decision of which remnants to chain your explosives through as they substantially ramp up the difficulty and rewards of the encounters. Speaking of rewards, there's a lot of cool stuff. So you to need find. to pay attention. PoE players hate that. And currency items are Kalgoran artifacts and logbooks, which we'll talk about soon. The Kalgoran traders have made this expedition to Rayclast in order to recover their ruined artifacts. There are many different types of artifacts, and each of the Kalgorans is interested in a different set of them, with a unique way they want to trade them from you. You can talk to the traders in the wild, in town, or in your hideout. They grant you access to your expedition locker. Which is like the heist locker, a lockbox for league-specific items, which can be accessed in all three places also. We're adding the affinity system to these lockers. This is a lot. Among the many relics of the ancient Kalgorans you might find at their expedition sites are logbooks. These ancient books chronicle the locations that their ancestors visited in their exploration of Rayclast. If it's really good, it's really good, but it's a, a lot. A logbook item can be rolled to have a set of explicit mods. It's a like lot. game map. Each location within the logbook has its own implicit mods, as well as a theme that controls what types of remnants can be found there. Okay. Talk to Danig in your hideout and give him a logbook you have found to go on an expedition to one of the locations it describes. These are all exotic places that no exiles have ever traveled to before. Wow, very heisty. Very heisty. Just like how a blighted map was one giant blight encounter with no natural monsters, the expedition you go on from a logbook is one giant expedition. Expeditions from logbooks are not only different because of their large size, but because there are special objects that you can interact with using explosives. For example, trees that contain monsters or items, passageways that reveal chests or bosses, and so on. Okay, that's cool. Speaking of, bosses, I like that. There are some formidable ones. For I was kind of hoping that heist is going to do that. New unique items and base types that can only come from expedition content. Here we go. The Kalgoran people are not from Rayclast, so the items do not have the same defensive properties that ours do. Instead of armor, evasion, and energy shield, they have ward. This new base type is a pair of boots that grants ward and can get mods that improve it. Last epoch the way in, the ward works in is despair. You have a certain amount of it, and that amount is fully deducted from the first incoming hit that you receive. Your ward is then disabled and takes five seconds to re-enable. At that point, the next hit you receive is substantially mitigated in the same way. It's quite a different style of defensive property and works very well in conjunction with systems like evasion, block, or dodge. Trickster, is what As you're saying. As the undead enemies you unearth in expedition encounters are fallen Kalgoran explorers, they also have a ward rather than traditional defenses. This expansion also promises to massively shake up the Path of Exile metagame, and we're doing that by introducing new gems. Lots and lots of new gems. For quite a while now, the way we have approached new skills in Path of Exile expansions is to make a bunch of gems themed around an entirely new build or dramatically augmenting a few existing builds. Dramatically? The blood Arguable. The skills the Ultimatum expansion are a good example of this. Arguable. While this approach is great in terms of creating interesting new builds, it doesn't always affect every character game-wide. In order to achieve this big metagame shakeup, we've come up with a crazy idea for the expedition expansion. Here we go. Adding a gigantic pile of new gems at once, spread among as many different playstyles as possible. Each of these gems can of course be used by many different classes. Wait, that's the meta shakeup? We use the list of 19 ascendancy classes for inspiration. I need more, GG. Gems. I need more. Our goal here is that regardless of which build you're playing, there will be new gems that you can add to your character. I need more. Let's go through the 19 new skill and support gems. The Earthbreaker support gem can be linked to any slam skill. Upon use, it summons an ancestor totem that uses that slam on your behalf. In this example, we've created a build that summons multiple ancestor totems that each wield tectonic slam. They As finally see, did it. This build covers a large area in Fiery Death. Well, you get It's always been weird that this way. never existed in PoE. This is a powerful option for chieftains in particular due to the various totem bonuses available on their ascendancy passive tree. Yeah, but it's still a totem Death though. We'll also be wondering if the Earthbreaker support allows you to create leap slamming totems, and the answer is absolutely. Nice. As with other ancestor totems, the Earthbreaker support also provides a buff to you. Shield charging totems. That's actually a good build. Rage Vortex provides a new way to consume your rage, unleashing a whirling vortex that rapidly hits enemies within its range. It gains damage and area of effect based on how much rage was sacrificed. The vortex slows down when enemies survive being hit by it, causing it to deal intense damage to tough targets. Seems to do insane While damage. While you can only have one rage vortex active at a time, 
Characters such as Berserkers, who are able to generate a lot of rage quickly, will find it a great way to augment their damage output. Bone Shatter strikes your enemies with a forceful blow. If an enemy is stunned by this attack, a powerful shockwave is released. The area of effect of the shockwave is determined by the duration of the stun you inflicted. Oh no, Quinn is coming. Each time you use Bone Shatter against an enemy, you take physical damage yourself and gain a trauma stack. The more stacks you have, the more damage Bone Shatter will deal to both you and your enemies. This self-damage mechanic makes the Juggernaut the ideal class for the skill because they have easy access to lots of armor to Don't the make stun. Also, the Juggernaut has ascendancy passives that grant increased stun it's duration. So unhealthy sure for the, the game. As large as possible. The next new skill is Shield Crush, which swipes your shield towards enemies and sends out forceful waves of damage based on the stats of your shield. These waves can shotgun enemies with up to two hits at once. So while Shield Crush is great against groups, it's also effective against single targets and can be used alongside Shield Charge and Spectral Shield Throw. We've improved both of these skills so that the overall aggressive shield build is more powerful. Oh shit! Spectral Shield Throw improvement? Yo! The new Behead support gem can only support strike skills and is basically like a mini headhunter. When a supported strike kills a rare enemy, you'll steal one of its modifiers. Obviously, this gem can't be as crazy as the full headhunter experience, so it comes with some restrictions. Stolen modifiers can persist for 20 seconds, and slaying another rare enemy will replace the modifier you have active. Oh, so it's just the one. The support gem also grants you more damage against okay. enemies on low life. Okay, that's not that good. The Slayer's Bane of Legends Ascendancy passive, this bonus really embraces the execution theme of the behead support. Explosive Concoction is quite a novel skill. It introduces several new concepts that haven't been explored with skills before. Here you can see the Pathfinder throwing an explosive projectile at monsters. Firstly, you may notice that the Pathfinder isn't holding any weapons. This is because Explosive Concoction is the very first range skill that can and must be used unarmed. Oh shit! It's also the first That's skill cool. that directly interacts with the benefits provided by your flask. Yo, so Diablo like. When you like. throw your Explosive Concoction onto a targeted area, it deals fire damage and uses available charges from your Yo. sapphire and topaz flasks to grant bonuses based on what flask charges were used. I think I'm gonna like this, this one. still works even if you don't have the appropriate flasks or charges to consume, but correctly managing your flask setup can greatly enhance the power What the, the skill. fuck? What we really love about this gem is that it brings to life the idea of throwing your flasks at enemies and having them explode. In conjunction with the flask-focused benefits provided by the Pathfinder's Ascendancy passive skills, we're really excited to see what new playstyles are enabled by this gem. This is the ambush skill. It teleports you up to an enemy, blinds them, and exerts your next one-handed melee attack. This exerted attack has a high critical strike chance and multiplier. In addition to this helping your assassinations, you can also use ambush to quickly re-engage targets after dashing away. Fortify, power charges. Voltaxic burst grants a buff that counts down to zero, triggering a burst of lightning Elemental damage overload. a portion of that damage converted to chaos damage. Enemies slain by your Voltaxic Burst will also explode I'm gonna love chaos this. damage around them based on their maximum This looks life. so good. I'm gonna love this. You can stack up many Voltaxic Bursts on yourself with the same Oh time. my god. Consider using duration modifiers to modify the timing of the explosion. It works exactly how I thought it's gonna and work. It and I love it. Before it explodes. Oh, that's so good. I told you guys it wasn't a channel. When you use Blade Trap, you throw out a mechanical oh, device with two copies of your weapon attached. These blades spin rapidly in a circle a set number of traps, times, dealing damage to anything they pass through. When dual wielding, the trap rotates faster but deals damage based on both weapons. This makes sense though. I think because traps trap, are getting reworked. Trap behaves a little differently to other I think this by operating It's not just the skill the gems. I think they're going to rework this a lot. This have some interesting itemization choices to make and focusing more on damage modifiers rather than the typical focus of maximizing attack speed. Summon Reaper creates a single powerful minion that uses fast melee physical attacks. That's the thing from the leader. screenshot! While the Reaper is active, you can use the skill again to direct the Reaper to a specific location, dealing a powerful attack along its path. The Reaper wants to be your only minion. It reduces the life and damage of your other minions, and will consume them to heal itself and gain damage and speed buffs. When designing this new skill for the Necromancer, we wanted to explore the idea of having a single ultimate minion. While there were ways to somewhat achieve this before, the Reaper is quite different in its abilities and interactions with other minions. He consumes it also other much minions? More and directly under your control. One quick note though, the Reaper will absolutely eat your animated guardian if you're not careful. <laughs> 
Forbidden Right is a powerful new spell that fires an exploding chaos projectile at a targeted area. This, please tell me it's It also sick. targets a selection of enemies in an area around the player's location oh. and fires projectiles at them too. It's perfect. But be careful, Forbidden Right also inflicts damage on you when cast. It works exactly how I wanted it. It's perfect. It's downside. perfect. You'll have devastating and widespread damage at your fingertips. Yes. Artesia from Han. This is exactly what I wanted. The two chaos skills. The I'm like starting with them. Fuck it. I don't even care about the numbers. Fires out a barrage of cold projectiles in a spiral formation as it travels. When it reaches its maximum it's over. distance or collides with the terrain, it explodes, firing out even more projectiles in a spiral. Wait, they this actually? This skill is one we've been wanting to bring to Path of Exile for a long time, and we felt that this new collection of skills was the perfect place to showcase it. I mean, it's frozen orb though. It's good though. This I like that. They should have done that a long time ago. This cry skill, which taunts nearby enemies and exerts your subsequent attacks, causing them to trigger a linked spell on your next melee hit. Okay, this is OP. Here you can see the player taunting enemies with Battle Mage's cry and using Consecrated Path to teleport to enemies. Okay, the this slam is, is exerted, ridiculously OP. Rain down on those enemies. In order to this will be very meta. Attack and spell damage, Unless the numbers are bad, this but... This provides that your spell damage apply to your attacks. This property is usually only available on wands and certain unique items. Okay, Battle Mage finally interesting and cool. Mana Bond is a somewhat unusual gem in that its source of power relies on your current mana. Uh-oh. Upon use, it creates a rune that explodes at a location This could be a target. very good thing or a very bad this thing. This explosion can either deal more damage or cover a larger area depending on the state of your mana. The more mana that's missing from your mana pool, the more damage Mana Bond will deal as it converts a percentage of your missing mana into added lightning damage. The more full your mana pool is, the more area the explosion will cover. Oh no. This means that being adept at managing your mana pool becomes highly advantageous. For example, having slightly higher mana while clearing a map provides greater clear speed, but when fighting tougher enemies, having a lower current mana amount is better. Well, finally we get to use Sanctuary of Thought on some build. Absolution this is, is being it. designed for Guardians as a spell version of Dominating Blow. Absolution deals a damaging shockwave in a targeted area. When it kills an enemy, it summons a Sentinel of Absolution, which also deals damage by casting Absolution That's itself. That's sick. The Sentinels also periodically cast a larger version of Absolution on the cooldown. That's so While cool. While the Sentinels version of Absolution can't summon even more minions, they are a powerful army to fight against. I love this. Over the last few years, Path of Exile has Here really we go. suffered from player power creep. As I needed more. Trying to Here make comes. compelling content, each expansion we release either gives players more axes on which to improve their character, more effective skills to use, or ways to craft better and more powerful items. Measuring from closed beta to now, this expedition expansion is our 30th Path of Exile release. The amount of power creep varies per release, of course, with systems like Ascendancy classes providing, what, like 20, 30, 40% power creep at once? No, way more. Like with compound interest, it would only take 8% more player power per expansion from new items, crafting, character systems, item acquisition opportunities, and new skills for player power to grow tenfold since the game is Here we go. And tenfold is roughly- I told you guys, the nerfs are here! Power. We may nerf the most out of hand cases every launch, but we're only reducing them back down to close. Here we go. Line. The average Path of Exile character gets more and more powerful. Yes! While we do occasionally add new endgame challenges that are appropriate for the current power level of top characters, the rest of the game just becomes oh. relatively easier and easier. Murder me! Some games handle this by just endlessly and exponentially scaling monster life and damage. Yes, bring back, back hold clear speed. Eventually, the numbers get too large. Yeah. And you need to crunch them all down again. Yeah, crunch them. This is a really cheap. Crunch my makes balls. The game feel like a treadmill, where the developers are just turning a knob as they hand you new power. They finally in the same place forever. Yes. We don't want to treat Path of Exile like that, and his our solutions are more complicated. Yes. At the same time. One of the issues is that players will always pick the most powerful way of interacting with any game system, even when that's not actually fun to play. This leads to behaviors like flask piano, or the way that everyone just picks support gems that basically add pure damage. Here we go. As game designers, it is our responsibility to make sure that the most powerful behaviors oh! are also the most fun to engage with. Say with that it! In mind, the balance changes that we are making in Expedition are far reaching and are going to affect almost all characters. Yes! Our goal is not to just nerf specific builds, but to improve the game, its challenge, and to make sure oh. that people want to pick fun build choices. Oh. Anyone who played Path of oh, Exile during its please. close beta nine years ago can attest to how challenging the campaign was to play. Yes! Early monsters were dangerous and terrifying, able to kill a character in a few seconds. All oh, the Quinn attention. viewers will quit! Players yeah, we will be a good game again! Cave because of the flicker strike ghosts. Oh my god! They were god. careful around rowers because a couple of unlucky charges could outright kill them. Trying to kill a Goatman Shaman while he had Molten Shell up was a pretty terrible oh idea. Oh my god! 
Nowadays, however, the game is a lot easier. We added level 2 and 4 support gems without increasing the difficulty of the game to compensate at all. Modern league mechanics shower the player in rare items from early levels, and we didn't make the game any harder in response. In fact, it's very interesting to compare the difficulty of league content with that of the base game. For a few years now, we've been shipping difficult leagues where monster life and damage values are a lot higher than the regular dude, I'm monsters gonna cry, that players dude. fight They're between doing those league encounters. They're actually going in, bro? Players enjoy league I'm content because it's challenging. They also told us they really enjoyed the Path of Exile 2 demo. <laughs> actually and it was fucking kill it. almost punitive in terms of difficulty. One thing we learned from building that demo was that it's okay for some monsters to be able to run 20 to 40 percent faster. I knew that they're going to do this eventually, but I thought of this years act, from now. It's a single monster that moves faster than the player's default movement speed. Like close to PoE two. We're rebalancing the campaign to be challenging. So far, we're focused mostly on Act One, but with each coming expansion, we'll be extending this further. Oh. Our plan is Fuck. that within a year or so, we'll have reviewed or touched every single monster in the game. This one's already like the hardest this act. What do you mean? Probably won't stop our most skilled players easily dominating the campaign or running through it to get to maps quickly. It will mean that players who engage with Wait, the content will just find a consistent campaign? difficulty level between league content and regular content. It's worth noting that the behavioral and balance changes to monsters will definitely affect their map versions. Chris, please, just say that it's... For quite some time, Path of Exile players me. and developers have been keen for a big reboot Crush to my its balls. Flask system. In the end game, flasks grant really powerful buffs for a number of seconds after use, and these buffs allow the player to kill monsters quickly, filling the flasks up so they can be used as soon as they run out. With five such flasks equipped, the correct behavior was to spam the one to five keys repeatedly to keep all the flasks constantly up without any downsides. This flask piano playstyle was popular enough that players were improvising devices to hit all of those keys at once. Spamming the same set of keys repeatedly to get a powerful set of buffs that rival the power you get from your entire set of equipped items is not a fun game mechanic. It's unbalanced and certainly isn't nice on your wrist. It prevents us from balancing the game well for players who aren't smashing their keyboard constantly and seriously restricts the design space we can use on flasks. In addition, certain unique flasks completely outclass other ones in terms of raw damage output. It was pretty clear to us that Path of Exile would be a lot better if we did some serious work on flasks to make sure that their incentives were aligned with fun. It was clear to the community for like blind. years now. Most utility flasks and unique flasks have been rebalanced. Expect a lot less permanent power from flasks. Flasks that provide raw defense or raw power are the ones with the biggest nerfs. Some flasks have been selectively buffed a bit if they were underpowered or less popular. In the Expedition expansion, there are now three ways that you can use flasks. You can either continue to use the rebalanced ones the traditional way, or you can apply one of the two new types of currency items to your flasks. The Instilling Orb and Enkindling Orb drop as part of the regular drop pool from regular monsters and chests. The Instilling Orb will cause a flask to be used automatically upon a specific condition being met. For example, when its charges become full, or when you become affected by Ignite. This means that in the cases where you would previously want to time Actual flask flask goggles. Usage, you can now rely on it happening automatically, with the only trade-off being that it may consume charges that you otherwise wouldn't intend it to. There are a variety of different conditions, and a random one is enchanted onto your flask, overwriting the others each time you use an instilling orb on it. What? They actually did it? The enkindling orb prevents utility flasks from gaining charges while active, but provides a big boost to their effect, duration, or various ways they interact with their charges. There are various different types of boosts, so you can use more orbs to reroll for the one that you want. When a flask removes a curse, it no longer applies a period of... It's almost worse. Curses. Flasks that remove ailments now only provide a period of immunity to that ailment if they actually removed it. So if you get ignited, use a dowsing flask to remove the ignite and to gain immunity for a while. You can't spam the flask before you're ignited to be permanently immune. If you want permanent mitigation of ailments, there are other options for your build. Note that we have rebalanced ailment mitigation in general, so there aren't a few options that completely outclass the rest. <laughs> Monster density in Path of Exile gets a lot higher as you play through the game. It's over. When we initially balanced Flask Charge Generation a decade ago, we did not anticipate the levels of monster density we would reach by 2021. Uh-oh. Monsters in Acts 6 through 10 now generate Red. fewer Flask Charges, and monsters in maps generate even fewer stuff. Reddit crying. So now there's a lot more strategy involved with Flask use. Flasks don't gain as many charges, so are a little harder to constantly spam, and aren't designed to provide such a powerful slew of permanent buffs. But you can control which provide larger than normal effects and which are triggered automatically as part of your build. We have reworked existing flasks such as basalt and aquamarine flasks and have introduced new corundum and gold flasks. 
Oh, cannot be stunned. For a while now, we have been concerned with the power gap between support gems. There are gems that grant huge multiplicative damage bonuses, and there are gems that do a bunch of stuff you don't really care about. When you're building a character, by far the correct choice is just to stack on all the multiplicative damage bonuses and ignore all the interesting utility support gems because their opportunity cost is just too high. We are reducing the damage bonuses on the support gems that are clearly just about huge damage boosts and trying to give them impactful and appropriate downsides. <laughs> For example, the controlled destruction support gem now penalizes critical strikes multiplicative. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, this works out to a total of somewhere around 20%, potentially as high as 40% damage reduction for a character using a fully six-link skill with entirely damaged support gems. There's much less impact for characters that use utility support gems or those who didn't have a six-link setup. This oh. achieves two goals for us. Firstly, the gap between good and bad support gems has been narrowed, creating more interesting build opportunities. Secondly, player damage output in the end game is reduced, which is a goal for this balance. Wow. Balance. As I mentioned, we want to iteratively restore challenge to part of it. Crush my balls. It's worth clarifying that we haven't buffed unused utility support gems as part of this balance pass. I love it. It's fully it. intentional that it's a reduction of power for the most damaging ones. They did it. Now let's talk about movement skills. As you know, most interaction with monster behavior is essentially bypassed if you're using an extremely effective movement skill. It keeps going. This is okay if you're specialized deeply into customizing it going. that skill. But it's currently the default state for any character if you use Flame Dash, Smoke Mine, or Dash without any further investment. These skills have been rebalanced to be more in line with other movement skills. These are not huge numeric nerfs, but do mean that there is scope for improving the performance of the skills by specializing around them. There are many other balance changes in 315, which you can read about in the Balance Manifesto and patch notes next week. Okay. To be honest, there are a lot of nerfs here. We completely understand that this level of change will make some people nervous. Get him out! It's time we start actively combating. Get the Queen viewers fixing out! Game systems that I want them gone. The way we intended them to. Fuck them! So back in early 2018, comes, there was a trend where every online game was releasing a battle royale mode and getting a lot of good press in the process. We had a running joke in the office. It's that coming. Our fast development speed meant that we could probably add a battle royale mode to Path of Exile in one day. You guys don't know. As April Fool's Day approached, we you don't know to yet. Do exactly that. We pulled a few developers together and asked them to spend no more than one workday each on their contributions to this new mode. On April 1st, 2018, we launched Path of Exile Royale. That's me. Uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> Old Rise, dude. It was a quick and dirty job, so we only left the game mode turned on for a couple of days. It went pretty well considering it had no custom I said, whatsoever. I said, give fucked fucking oh shitter. God, Get the fuck out after that, by the way. They cut that part out. After April 1st, we they got it out. off and forgot all about it. <laughs> but the community did not forget. In fact, they've been quite keen to remember it constantly and to urge us to bring it back. But that wouldn't be easy, as to actually make it a decent experience would require a lot of custom balance, playtesting, and feature implementation work. A few months ago, we decided to do exactly that. Path of Exile Royale will return today. In fact, immediately after the QA section of this live stream, we're going to run it for the weekend as a test and then turn it on every weekend for a while, starting the week after Expedition's launch. We'll patch it between weekends with balance tweaks, and if it's popular over the long term, new features. We have no idea what the long term viability of this game mode is going to be like, so we'll run it for this league and then assess where things stand. It gets even better, chat. Our initial version of Royale from 2008 it gets better. used Path of Exile's default passive skill tree, which didn't have interesting options for characters that rarely got to level 10. It also used all of our skill gems and unique items as is, where many of the interesting ones were way too high level for these super low level characters to ever find. We've made a completely new Royale specific passive <laughs> skill tree that has everything you need to quickly adapt your character for high speed PvP combat. It, it gets better! approximately 90 new custom notable passives, a special new left aligned window so you can stay aware of your surroundings while allocating skills, and you gain two passive skill points per level. You're also able to allocate passive skills from any of the tree starting locations, regardless of which character class you picked. We have created low level versions of around 50 iconic skill gems, 20 support gems, and over 70 unique items. <laughs> These royalified items are appropriate for low level play and include quite a few things that are usually only available at substantially yep. higher character levels. Now you guys know game. why I was excited, huh? <laughs> the whole island has been improved. We've made the terrain more varied and interesting so that the fights feel different depending on where they take place. You'll encounter flask troves, which provide charges for your flasks. These troves periodically replenish themselves, so expect a lot of combat to occur around them. 
it gets better. There are many other small improvements you'll notice when you play Royale, such as an improved spectator mode, improved leaderboard, and ability to pillage items from players through a special interface rather than having them clutter the ground. Your prize for coming first on a Royale event is this new Roa Dinner hideout decoration. Ooh. It's a bit like a challenge league totem as it grows more impressive as you win more events. 